How you doing? My name is Charles Washington. I'm an environmental artist and I'm working on a series of upcycle projects that we're going to be able to uh, give you the opportunity to be able to take part in. I want the first thing I want to be able to share with you at this time is the different materials that we're going to be using. Uh, first product that we definitely want to be aware of is that we need two containers. One for two containers of water. One to be able to use to clean your brushes. The other to, to be able to keep your water flowing with your colors. Water is definitely your friend. You, know, you want to always be able to have those two containers available along with a, a, a piece of uh, cloth or, 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 or napkins to be able, or towels to be able to you know, keep your brushes clean. The second thing you want to be focused on is the brushes. You want to be able to use all different types of brushes and it's great to be able to experiment you know, the larger brushes and also the smaller brushes for details. And as we go along, I can tell you how to be able to use that effectively. Along with the brushes, sponges. Uh, look in your cupboard, look in, in any, any room that may be able to have some of these great, fantastic materials to use. One is the sponge. Uh, with the sponge, you want to be able to get the sponge, and this is great. Go to your kitchen and see if you have any of these tools here. They may look like they're pretty good, but it's excellent. And we're creating a new series of brushes to be able to work on a couple other series of uh, of the three-dimensional pieces and also the sculptures and glass. It's real simple. You cut them in different angles and you do this. You apply it. Now the secret at this point is to be able to then dip them in your container of water. You know, squeezing it so you can get all of the water out. But now it has flexibility. You want it to be able to have the flexibility so when you start applying the inside of this particular project you can actually use a nice wine glass that you may not want to use anymore and this works perfectly so you have a series of different widths so it can actually help you design it that's one of the techniques and one of the projects that we're going to be working working with glass and also working with markers markers are great because you can actually use permanent markers to be able to do different techniques. One, to be able to establish your position with designs, okay? The other, you want to be able to use the markers for details, which I'll talk later on in this process. Going forward, we have the markers. Uh, we also have paint. I love paint. I love the different techniques that you can use with paint. Um, if you sign up, you know, to be able to be part of that special series with the 25 uh, lanterns, uh, you also will be able to get a variety of different types of water-based paint. And you understand, I said water-based. We want to be able to keep keep um, very uh, environmental conscious, and water-based paint um, is a very good process to use. Uh, and also water-based varnish. That will then be able to keep that fabric or metal or any type of items, it bonds it and it has a little more longer longevity or longevity also. So we're talking about the painting process. And as far as design, I really want you to, to understand that we want to be able to take that, that, uh, that creative mold you know, and get it outside the box. You know? So we want to go beyond outside the box with creativity. We want to think about going beyond the box. And that's by thinking of different creative ideas to be able to use in your home. This is one, okay. The next step, we'll be looking at is uh, um, the working with the glass and also work with mirror and I'll be able to talk more about that. Prepping and priming this is how we'll start. Uh, these are some great brushes again and what I'll do is take the brushes out. Now here we go. This again if you have any type of glass materials this will show you how to be able to start your process of reverse painting. Okay. If you have a design, you can actually put it inside your, your, your glass or your lantern and then get a nice magic marker, sharpie, suggested. Black, you can use fine or medium, depends on how you want to go. But you do it outside. It can be any design. I, I love doing swirls. And remember, there's no mistake. And this is your own design. You want to be able to take the 
the idea and just run with it. It's also about relaxing. So think of this as a therapy, okay? And as you're working, it'll start falling in place. Okay, so now this is part of what you want to do first of all. Prepping is very important. It'll save you time and you do not want to come back and hesitate when you work with the paint. So prepping this will be able to be the first step of prepping for your, your on your glass. Now, using this form that we created with the brush, you actually will put paint, whatever paint that you want to put on, and work from the back. This is the process. You can go in any movement. And what's very, very important, you want to put a light coat of glaze on it because it will then make the paint really start being more um, confirmed, I mean, more tight, and uh, it'll have resistance as far as coming off. Okay? Brush it on, or you can use the same process with the, with the sponge. Uh, that takes care of the prepping of the uh, the glass. Now, we also have to have a base, and I'll, I can talk to you later on the final um, way of preparing uh, preparing um, you know the final base part of it later on. But right now, it's about prepping the glass. That's very important. This is a a nice design, and I feel that like you can do the same. Now, next product you can see using paper or any type of material that you want to be able to first use glaze, you put it on, and then you come back with any type of Christmas materials, wrapping, you, you add it on to your, your glass or your, your lantern, and then you then overlay it with the marker. Gives you a beautiful uh, process. It's the next step. Same technique with this brush. This is the final result. Look at that. Using your your brush, but also your marker. This is a combination of your marker, 99%, and the rest with a little touch up with your paint. Different effect. It depends on how you feel or, or how you want to experiment. Remember, you want to go beyond of the box. Don't think outside the box, go beyond. That's my whole way of looking at these creative uh, pieces here. Now we're finished with the glass. Let's go with the wood. This is a typical way you will start. You want to definitely sand it. You know, we'll talk more about the sanding when we get to the next level. But you sand it down, you know, get all of the, the bumps and roughs and, and whatever paint that you don't want on there. Okay, this is the first step. The next is priming. As you see, you prime it, and then you can apply your paint. Look at the texture. You know, after you prime it, it'll actually uh, keep it from, uh, from the paint from soaking in, and then you get a brilliant, bright color effect. Okay, and then using your markers, you can come back and make details. Uh, this works with your frames, and also it works with your with your with your with your furniture. And we'll talk further as far as how you can uh, use the application with the different types of design. But this here gets you ready for the next, the third stage. So enjoy.